All right, I've got some very serious and important news to share. Check it out, oh yeah. Oh man, that is some good expansion. I still have some more to go, but damn, I feel good. Yes, yes. I've been walking down the street, Girls are coming up to me left and right. Evan, oh my God, your diastema is so big. And in my head, I'm like, I'm wearing a mask. Like, how can you even see it? But I feel great. Doesn't even matter. Look at that. So it's been a while since my last update that was the installation. It's been a month since I got it installed, actually. I've just been releasing videos really late. After I went home, there was about eight hours of pain. The MSE that I had on the previous trial was like two hours. Um, for those who are just checking in, I had MSE and it failed and now I have this custom six screw Marpy. So we're, we're, we're seeing how that's going and it looks like it's going well. So yeah, otherwise really not too different from my first MSE experience. If you want to know more about like some of the feelings and whatever, it's pretty much all the same. Um, and TLDR is it's it's really tolerable. It's, it's not bad. You, get, you, you take so fast for the major pain to go away and then just a few days and it's like you're perfectly used to it. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to stop talking here for a second. Check out some of these progress photos over this past month. I've been turning for a month at about a rate of one turn per day. Um, and my Marpy, each turn is two turns of an MSE. So my Marpy is 0.25 millimeters per turn. I'm here to report that I have nasal breathing benefits. I, I, for a while I was like, is it too early to say? But check it out. I mean, you can see the tan line of the nasal strip, but no nasal strip. I've been using them a lot less lately. I feel like I can breathe and it's, oh, it feels so good. Oh my God, I have not been able to consistently breathe out of my nose. For a few years, at least, maybe ever, um, there's still more to go. And so now you're probably all wondering how my sleep is doing and man, oh, it is worse. It's worse, but it makes sense that it worse and here's what's been going on. Over this past month, I've had this big device in my mouth and as time went on, my proper resting tongue posture has gotten more and more improper. Over the night, my tongue starts sagging down and down because I can't do the suction hold. I can't keep the tongue all the way up on the roof of my mouth from the front to the back with some suction because there's this device in the way. I can't make suction like around the device so my tongue posture has just been getting worse and worse and worse. And I've been waking up a lot more throughout the night. I've been feeling a lot more tired and I wear my CPAP mask and I've been having a lot more mouth leaks. You know, I, I tape my mouth and, but I think it's just, that's just the way it's going to be. I really wouldn't be too surprised if I didn't feel any better until I at least get this Marpy removed, which I don't remember. It might be like six months or something. So the next question is, does, am I still getting Dome Mini? Uh, Dome Mini is the surgical assist treatment where if this Marpy fails, there's too much resistance, we make some cuts and that allows the Marpy to work better. And Dome Mini is one of the new hot protocols for this procedure. The answer is I don't know. I've been told by Dr. Yoon multiple times that just because you get X amount of expansion doesn't mean you're gonna continue at any day my expansion could just stop. I'm not really sure if the expansion I got now is sufficient or if I'm meant to get more. Here's why I'm really excited. I've mentioned this multiple times on the channel. This is my biggest concern when it comes to this mid-face and maxillary expansion treatment that I'm getting. I, I've said this many times before, um, the surgical assist protocol that my surgeon wants to use on me involves a cut here called the Lafort one cut where they completely cut through the bone just above where the teeth are rooted. And that means that the maxilla is able to expand without all the resistance of the rigidity of the skull. It expands much easier. However, 
it expands only below where they did the cut. So normally, and I said this before, normally when you get this MSE or Marpy, your face expands this way by tilting outward. And the fulcrum of rotation is actually right here. So it, I think nine times out of 10, you can't notice, but your cheekbones even expand outward. Your entire skull starts expanding outward. And most notably, you have a, a nasal cavity in your skull right here that is an empty space and the entire width of the nasal cavity starts expanding. If you only get the Lafort one cut, then only the bottom of the nasal cavity starts expanding. Um, well, here are some interesting information about that. The first thing to note is this. Uh, I, I expressed all these concerns to my surgeon, Dr. Liu at Stanford, and he said he had a few thoughts. The first is that the majority of the airflow in your nose actually passes through below that Lafort one cut. So air does not go up into your nose and then back, like all the way to the top of the nose. It actually just goes into the nostrils and then immediately goes back. The rest of the height of the nasal cavity here is where you have your olfactory nerves and sinuses and things like that. So um, Dr. Liu's under the belief that it's not necessary to expand the entire width of the nasal cavity from top to bottom in all cases. But I think that this is one of those things where honestly, it's better safe than sorry. If you don't want to go through this long journey and get the MARPI, you know, I, I've gotten the MSE and then the MARPI and if this fails, you know, I've been rethinking Dome Mini. Maybe I'll try one of the less invasive protocols. There's other places you can cut that still allow for mid-face expansion. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I, I believe that he's right. But I, I think that it's unarguable that the Lafort one cut gives you suboptimal breathing benefits when you assume that you'll have successful expansion with or without it. And I think that you don't want to make that mistake. You don't want to let go of some of the potential benefits you could be having. But some people really, really need that Lafort one cut and there's no way around it. For me, this diastema here is really relieving because it is more and more evidence that I'm not even gonna have to worry about that stuff. So another one of the big concerns with performing the lap, that, performing that Lafort one cut, like Dung Dome, for example, is when you do that, the expansion you get is not parallel. So the front of your skull and the front opens up a lot, but the back of the palette here doesn't open up much at all. It's kind of like a Pac-Man opening. And I'll throw some images up here so you can see what I mean. This is something that a lot of people are worried about. So I asked my surgeon, Dr. Liu, and here's what he said. He said, so air passes up into your nose and then immediately back through the bottom of the nasal cavity, as I said. And then it goes through these two bony canals and the air passes through bone, through the skull and into your throat. And those bony canals are not cylindrical. They're actually sort of conical. So the front opening of those canals is narrower than the exit opening of those canals. So it's more important to open up at the front than the back because the front is narrower. Thus, it is the bottleneck of airflow. That's, that's what my surgeon believes, but I know that it's still under debate. Um, with MARPI, it's parallel expansion. So again, that's another reason why if this works, it's kind of like, poof, I don't even have to care. I don't have to worry about it. Awesome. Anyway, back to my experience. So. I started noticing the early beginnings of the diastema at about three weeks. Anyway, a few days after my diastema first appeared, 
I turned the key the way I did every night. I went to bed, um, you know, maybe six hours after I turned the key, I woke up in so much pain. It was almost as much pain as when I first got it installed. Um, and I was just like, oh man, this, what is happening? Uh, and I reversed the turn and that helped. And to me, I was like, well, that's it. Just like Dr. Yoon said, just because you get some expansion doesn't mean you're gonna continue. You, you might hit a limit. And I, in my head, I was like, I hit the limit. And so I emailed Dr. Yoon and she says, you know, it's more complicated than that. Keep turning. And so I kept turning and I kept looking for screw tilting. I noticed a little bit of screw tilting. And so that wasn't a great sign either, but obviously things are working. Um, I continued to do the turning, but I was really careful about it. I did, like, I took a day or two off and then I started doing a half a turn. And then I, lately I've been doing half a turn in the morning, half a turn at night, really spacing it out. But honestly, I'm back to being able to do one turn a day. All that, that pain was just seemingly random. I asked her about it and she says that, oh, you know, probably other sutures in the face got loosened or separated. Um, and I don't know which ones, uh, if anyone has any ideas, I'm thinking maybe the teromaxillary junction or something, I, I, I don't know. But maybe that's another milestone to look out for. Either way, I've been expanding, no signs of slowing, it's been getting bigger and bigger, and I haven't had any of that big resistance anymore. So that's really it. You know, this is a process where you really gotta be patient. So I think a lot of you probably identify with me on this. We gotta be patient and good things are gonna come, but it, it might have to get worse before it gets better. My next concern, is Dr. Yoon gonna be able to bring my teeth together with braces? She told me, I think twice, she was like, oh, you know, it can be, difficult to bring the teeth fully together. And do I have difficult? Are you not gonna be able to do it? Am I gonna live with a gap tooth now? This isn't what I signed up for. So uh, that's my next natural thing to worry about. I, I always gotta worry about something. Anyway, pretty awesome thing to report. I'm pretty glad I ended up doing this. I was so close to just saying, forget about it. Let's just do dome. Uh, like I said before, my surgeon, Dr. Liu, really did not like this idea of trying the Marpy slash MSE again. Um, but, you know, honestly, Dr. Yoon says, you know, these surgeons, they don't see the success cases. They just see the failure cases because Dr. Liu doesn't do Marpy. He only does Sarpy. I'm glad I took my time, that's my lesson.